Thanks for staying with us. If you're just tuning in, we're on dressing rape. Rape is a global issue, and back home in Nigeria, we have countless cases of rape allegations under investigation. You know, as I mentioned earlier, I saw the video of the young man and um, that was narrating how he abused a 12-year-old girl. And when he was confronted with the possibility of an arrest, he shrugged it off and, you know, with this word, who go arrest me? My goodness. Yes, that was what he said in the video. Now, Taiwa Kilami is a social development lawyer, a co-founder, power parenting company, and a, a parent rights to social protection advocate. He's a, uh, is, um, that's the, he's a publisher. Now, remember, you can join this conversation, tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Way Show Africa one with the hashtag Waze, or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-84663. Thank you so much, um, Taiwa Kilami, for joining us this evening. Thank you so much for having me. It's my pleasure to be with you this evening. Taiwo, you know, I saw that. I don't know if you saw that video on, on Twitter. It, it, it's, I'm cringing, you know. The guy was just narrating how he subtly molested a 12-year-old girl. And you know what even struck me in the video was the fact that when he was, he was, he was confronted that, ah, ah, they go arrest you, say, I beg, who go arrest me? That was his word. You know, so how, I mean, first of all, what is the... Uh, what's it called, the, the penalty for rape, and especially rape in this kind of case that it is not violent, because you can't even trace it, that something has happened, except that girl goes to report. And if that girl does not even know that she, ha she was molested, where do we even begin from? Well, uh, let me start by saying thank you for inviting me. I think my third missionary journey on your show, and it's my pleasure. Thank um, you. Let me start by saying that um, every act every act of sexual molestation or rape is violent. Whether you did it violently or you did it subtly, it is violent, it's condemnable, it's unacceptable. Um, when you talk about, uh, so there's a difference between uh, a child that is actually molested and another that is raped. They come out to different laws. Uh, the Child Rights Act or the Child Rights Law of different states, 24 states of the Federation, have uh, domesticated the child rights law uh, act into law and uh, there are different measures of punishment in all of these states our part in lagos state the lagos state government has gone ahead to create the special sexual offenses court uh one of the special courts in lagos state so the the punishment for uh, babe, uh for sexual abuse when we're talking about the 12 year old now we are looking at um, life imprisonment or thereabouts um depending on the gravity of the offense and all of that. Now, now um, my, to my own mind, I think the major problem we are dealing with is whether the justice system is able to live up to its name. Uh, that's a major issue. You know, there are three reasons why people commit a crime. The first reason is that there's a will to commit a crime. And uh, there's a little we can do about that. People have the bill for dominance for different reasons. The second reason why people commit a crime is the, the reward that comes from a crime. The third reason why people commit a crime is the possibility of escape, and that is that is huge. The fact that you know if you commit this crime, nothing is going to happen. And that's what that guy in the video was saying, who will arrest me. Now, now that is a no-name person. That's an inconsequential person. If an inconsequential person, I'm very sorry to say to use that language, I'm saying it in terms of uh, it's not a government official, it's not a rich person. Yeah. So if uh, if a person at that level who uh, uh, who is not in the upper crust can have this feeling that I can sexually molest a child and I will get away with it, how much more somebody who is in power? How much somebody? Oh. Today we're having a bit Ooh, of network jam. I mean, that's, but, but, that's really you know, I was going to ask him yeah. that um, rape culture is backed by a lot of religious and cultural sentiment on male dominance. Do you think the nature, do you think the, 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 uh, the society is nurturing this menace? I actually agree that the society is nurturing it. Like, we are helping. Like when because that man was a shield, sign of you know dominance for him to say who you is know, like, who's going to And you know the funny thing? I, I was also thinking about it. Flip it. In a northern culture where young people are married off at the age of at 12, yeah. as far as they are concerned, there's nothing, there's nothing, that you're not abusing me. It's not my right. It's, it is now that people are now coming to that consciousness to say that, no, this is, this is child abuse. But this even is Saudi Arabia... You know, has enacted that the age of consent 
is 18. Mm. Saudi Arabia that is the center of the Islamic world. But you know, so I, if I they think, can, I think that if you're going to, when age of consent is 18 and you marry off someone at 13, there that's is still statutory that statutory rape. Yeah, the man. So I, I think uh, we have yeah. Taiwa killer me back okay. on the show. Um, you were going to ask that question. I think it, it's 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 nice for you to have that question now. Hello, Mr. Akilami. Thank you very much for having me. Okay, I was going to ask that um, rape, uh, rape is backed by a lot of um, cultural and religious sentiment of male dominance and supremacy. Do you think inadvertently the society is nurturing this menace? Well, the society is nurturing this man in so many ways. Uh, society is nurturing this man by promoting uh, gender inequality, uh, uh, subtly telling the girl child uh, and the boy, subtly in the way we treat the boy child and the girl child, this idea that gender means superiority, uh, that I'm a man, I'm superior. Forgetting that gender has to do with role playing. It is the way that we are playing that is different. Human beings are equal. Status, uh, in status, we are equal. So, so no human being is more is more is more important or more dignified or more distinguished than the other. We need to understand that. But do we when we treat the boy child and the girl child, do we make them understand that? But For I example, think that was, I mean, a lot of parents are coming to that realization and they are beginning to train the, the new generation of children coming. But you know what? Because we are we are running out of time, I really want to ask you, you are the man, right? What are the triggers yeah. when it comes to rape? Because recently now, with the high flux of all these things, they call Paraga and all of that. Mm -hmm. I mean, two days ago, somebody just called on a radio station saying that some guys, four guys, stormed into a room and raped a 12-year-old girl. The mother was crying hysterically and all of that. With the high rise of alcohol, drugs, because there are a lot of things it that would induce the man. women. You know, we heard of the case of, of a 75-year-old woman that yes. was raped. Now, what do you think the triggers are? Because we need to, if we, if we must solve this problem, we, we must know what fundament. triggers rape. Okay, um, in 1989, there was a man called Ted Bundy. Ted Bundy was one of the most serial killers the world has ever seen. A day before he was executed by a electric chair in 1989, he granted an interview to a man called James Dobson. And in that interview, he was talking about, you know, Ted Bundy was a rapist and a serial killer. He raped women and killed them. And by his confession, he raped and killed 35 women. But by police investigation, he raped and killed over 100 women. And he was being interviewed by Jeff Dobson, and he said something very instructive. Then they asked him, how did you get into trouble? Uh, he's believed that he believed he was properly raised. How did you get into trouble? He said he got into trouble at the age of 17 when he started viewing pornography. And as he started viewing pornography, uh, he, he became, he became uh, addicted to it. His urge for sex became insatiable. His search for dominance became untamable, And he went all out for it. Now, the point I'm trying to make is this. Today, we have the factory that is producing rapists. We have the kind of music we expose our children to. We have the kind of music speaks of entertainment, speaks of drug, speaks of sex, and all of that. And when Tenbody was talking about, in 1989, uh, many years before it was, it was arranged, we were talking about a time where all we had was hardcore pornography. But today we have softcore and hardcore. There's hardly any music that we listen to today that does not promote pornography. Driven. And, and so, and so an when you promote sex, drug, and all of this, through entertainment, you know that you are causing, you are, you are breeding a set of people that is going to have an uh, 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 insatiable urge, uh, uh, untamable dominance, a uh, search for dominance, and all of that. So I think the real trigger is the lifestyle that the, ra the way we raise our boys the and the kind of things that are exposed to today, that is a major trigger. And until we address that, we are not going to be holistically addressing the whole issue. Because the whole issue is this. At the end of the day, we must be interested in solutions. We must be interested in how to cope. If the so ju justice system is able to help us, then there has to be an enlightenment. Enlightenment is superior to enforcement. What kind of enlightenment program are we going to embark, embark upon
to ensure that we put capability where capability belongs in terms of exposure of our children to, 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 to materials that are not meant to, for them, in terms of the kind of training that we give to our children in terms of gender, sexuality, and the rest of that. Okay, well, you know what? I do have this goals. I, I have another question for you. But first, I think you, since you talked about porn, I'd like to read this quote. It says, I think we have successfully um, said that rape is not sex. It is violence. But what we have not successfully said is that pornography is not erotica. Porn means female slaves. Eros has an idea of love and mutual pleasure and free choice. I fear that pornography is taking over sex when, in fact, it is way more about domination. That's from uh, that's by um, Gloria Steinem. I'd like to get your reaction on this. And also, the big question that I think we're not asking enough in this issue of rape, I think it's not just one-sided, like you rightly mentioned, no gender is superior to the other. So there is also something like male, uh, like right. male rape, yes. But the first time I heard of it, it was difficult for me to imagine it. I understand you can molest a child or rape a child, but to rape an adult male, how, in a way that is not explicit, because this is prime time TV, how do you rape a man? <laughs> well, um, you can take uh, sexual advantage of the man. You know that um, uh, under the under the criminal code, mm -hmm. the criminal code is still very primitive, in the sense that it has not taken into cognizance the yeah. fact that the a man can be raped, and um, and um, when you look at the verb. Uh, I'm not sure whether there are provisions that take into cognizance the fact that a man can be raped. So when you look at it, our judicial system is still far, far behind schedule. But, but when it comes to the Child Rights Act, Child Rights Act recognizes that both the boy and the girl can be sexually molested. Mm -hmm. And molestation for boys and for girls when they are children, a child is anybody below 18, is deeper. Because the things that it begins with uh, uh, grooming, it begins with the kind of statement you make to children. It begins with touching and the rest of that. All of that are realities that the law, the Child Rights Act, takes into cognizance, and the Child Rights Law of different states, at least 24 states of the Federation, when the Child Rights Act has been passed. Now, when it comes to porn, uh, uh, I define porn as any any uh, exposure to any material that arouses or sexual sensibilities unnecessarily. Uh, sexual pleasure must be leading to somewhere. It cannot be just to excite you and get you uh, and get you wild, and you become you begin to have insatiable uh, 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 urge and um, have an untamable capacity, you know, to want to wreck havoc and dominate. It, that's not the purpose for which the creator created sex. Now, now, when you look at porn, it's perversion, and in, in itself. The whole idea of porn is violent in itself. So for me, we need to so we need to teach our children these things. You know, we talk to our children about hardcore pornography, hardcore pornography, which is explicit. But we don't talk to our children about softcore pornography, which is innuendo. Even a song, can, a child can, a young, young people or anybody can listen to a song which contains sexual innuendo, and at the end of the day, the person is aroused in his body, but the person is not seeing a picture. It's just hearing the, the lyrics, the lewdness of the lyrics, and all of that, and the person is getting turned on. Now, this is an area we're not looking at. So the people who, who are the merchants of soft-core soft -core pornography come to us as stars, as musicians, as entertainers, as, as comedians, and we accept it. We take it. There, there, there's hardly any comedian that I know in Nigeria today, only few, that do not use sexual innuendo from time to time, and we laugh away, and we uh, and our children are exposed to all of that. So until we begin to be holistic about our approach, because justice cannot have two measures. You can you can't define hardcore pornography as wrong, and you def even the latest album released, the latest single released by Naramali, I cannot mention the name of the track online. It cannot be mentioned. We can't mention this point on TV. I, I can't even mention it to my wife. She will feel insulted. That is the name of the latest thing we have released. So, so, and, and nobody is going to be worried about it. Nobody is going to be concerned about it. And that is messing up our mind, messing up the mind of our children. Now, and from soft core pornography, you graduate to hard core pornography because everything on earth that you're engaging with grow. 
even we grow on if unchecked, good we grow if unchecked. So those are fundamental issues. Hmm. In holistically looking at this matter, we need to look at the making. You know, when Jackie Chan does a movie, he does the making of the movie. So how does someone become <laughs> a rapist? Now, please note, a rapist or a suspected rapist cannot be justified for any reason. Any reason, the act is condemnable, is unacceptable. But again, we must be interested that both the rape and the rapist need help. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think we can wrap it up there. Thank you so much, Hawa Eklami. As we said to Hawa earlier, we're going to say to you again, this is a conversation that we are very passionate about and we're going to keep having on this table. Thank you so much for your time this evening. Thank you. All right, so please watch a repeat broadcast of this episode tomorrow at 3 p.m. It's been really insightful. You need to watch this over and over and over again. Keep all the conversations going on all our social media platforms at We Show Africa or at Plus TV Africa as we continue to hear what you're saying. Now, in well, you case what, you missed... Well, I think I would like to add... Wait, one, one minute. One minute. <laughs> Let me just finish to tell them our quote. In case you okay. missed the quote today, the power of the harasser, the abuser, the rapist depends above all on the silence of women. Yeah, you were going to say something. Yeah, I think it's very important that I say it. Number one, I don't think I was satisfied with his answer on how do men get raped. Because if you're looking for equal representation in the society, we'll it's that. important. Because that is, that is something that, that is bigger than what we I was yeah. going to ask. Yeah, before it, you it told just, me we're running out of time, but we, his thoughts about spousal rape. Spousal rape is a big issue. Yeah, that goes well, you know what? We want to apologize. To, I mean, we had a lot of questions. So yeah. we, we couldn't take your questions. Thank you, everyone that is watching from Abuja, London. Thank you so much. We couldn't take your questions, but we are going to keep this conversation. We'll have a part two. Thank you and see you tomorrow live at 8 p.m.